I have opened the ebook template file. You can see here template ePub book dot ePub. And the first thing we have to do is to create a copy of it so that yours have your template available for a new ebook. So it's quite straightforward. You go to the file menu and we save as. Give your ebook a new name. Call this ebook one and save. Now if we go back and have a look, you'll see that there's the ebook template file that we started with, and now we have a new file called ebook one, and that's the one that we'll be working on. So your template file will always remain as your default template file. You can see we have cover image as we looked at before. Now probably the there's, there's two things we'll look at here. The first is replacing an image, particularly this cover image, and the second is how do you bring text into content into your pages of this new ebook. So let's replace this placeholder image with the cover image of the book that we'll be working on, which is one of my own books called The First Five Years, Port Hedland, 1965 to 1970. We'll use that as an example. Now, 800 by 600 pixels is a size that I'm suggesting that works well with most readers. And as e-readers become more capable, this image may change, but for the moment this seems to work just fine. It's quite simple. Over here in the images folder, you can see we have a file called cover.jpg, which is this image. We're simply going to replace cover.jpg in the ebook with cover.jpg, which is your book cover. So you will have prepared an image that's 800 by 600 pixels in size that is the cover of your book. So we'll use one of my book covers as an example. And this is how we do a simple replace. I'll right click on the images folder and add an existing file. Sigil allows me to look through my computer and we can see here that there's an image called cover.jpg. It's pre-sized to 800 by 600 pixels and it's the cover of my book that I've already prepared. So I'll select that and open it. Sigil notes that there is already a file called cover.jpg in this ebook and would I like to replace it? Okay, yes I would. Now it seems like nothing's happened, but we can check that that image has been replaced by simply double clicking on cover.jpg. And you can see that Sigil gives us a preview of the image. And we can also see now that it's updated in the preview over here. So to bring all of this into synchronization, I'm simply going to save, then reopen ebook one. And we find that it updates. I think this is just a little bug in Sigil and perhaps this editor that we're working in here doesn't always show you exactly what's changed, but this one here does so you can see that something's happened. The title page is the one that contains publishing information, ISBN numbers and things like that. So all we've got to do here is edit some of the text and add the title of the book. First five years, Port Hedland, 1965. 1970 is the title of my book. Put your name here and again here. Now you can organize this page any way you like. This is simply the page where you would gather together all of your publishing information in one place, in one page, almost in one chapter. So day day, let's go for 01 July 2015. I don't have an ISBN number to hand, but let's just assume that that's been replaced with your ISBN number. Publisher name, my publisher is what else is possible. 
uh, copyright so provide your copyright information so it's copyrighted to Stephen Outram 2015 and again down here one five I'm just going to copy my name and paste it in there yes I do want to paste that as plain text so quickly we've added in the relevant information down here you'll see that there's a website name now I'll take this opportunity to look in at the code view so I can just describe to you several of the items there that may be useful in the future code view so, initially, that looks a little confusing. It's not really. It's actually quite organized. The part that's of interest to you is everything below this body tag. Between that body tag, the opening of the body, and between the closing of the body. So all of these things here are content in your book. Now you'll see here H1, H2, and P. These are opening tags that determine the style of the text. If you just look over here on the right hand side, we'll just scroll up so I can see the title. The title, the first five years, is in larger text. So clearly that's heading one. Heading two is the author's name. And these sections here are paragraph tabs. So here you can see heading one. And then this is the readable text. The first five years, Port Headland. 1965 to 1970. This tag here closes this closes the tag. So H1, so everything that this is from there to there is the opening tag. It tells the e-reader that this that the following text will have a heading one style. The closing tag tells the reader that this is the point at which you can stop applying this style. Same with heading two. There's the opening tag all the way through to there. There's Stephen out from the the readable text and there's the closing tag telling the browser to end that type of style. These are paragraphs, opening paragraph, closing paragraph, all of these are paragraph styles and down the end we have an image. We'll look at that a little bit later. Now the thing we want to look at here is the website name. So as part of HTML you have something called an anchor an anchor tag tells the e-reader that this is clickable text. So there's several parts. First of all, we have the letter A, which means anchor. Then we have href. Now href is the target website, the target URL. We have here the readable text. That's what is actually seen and clicked on. And there's a little tag there that ends the anchor so the browser knows that that's the point at which this particular styling finishes. So we're going to do two things here in the code. First of all we're going to change website name to my website. So when somebody clicks the link they will go to that website and the second thing I'm going to do is change the clickable text, the text that people see to the name that I would like there. So you'll notice over here in the preview that that's just changed from website name to Stephen Outram. Now you can put anything in there that you like. For example, if we change that to website, then the word website becomes the clickable text. So it's entirely up to you what you want people to see. Okay, so now we've updated. So let's go back to book view and you can see that I've got a clickable link that will take people to my website. This image here, um, I have an image for my publisher. What else is possible? And I would replace that image with, with that. Um, you might have an image for yourself, for your company, for your business. Um, if you have no desire to have any images there whatsoever, you can treat this like a piece of text. Just click there and backspace. So you click behind it and backspace. I'll undo that. Or you can select it. What I did there, I clicked on the image. 
dragged a little bit, let go, and press the delete key. And then we'll go to. So several ways to remove an image which is in its own paragraph. So treat it as text. So I'll leave that there for the moment. So we've completed the first page. Let's save. A couple of things to notice. When I click within the first five years, within the title, you'll see that Heading 1 becomes highlighted over here. If I click within Stephen Outram, the author, Heading 2 becomes highlighted. If I click down here, where it says Author, Paragraph becomes highlighted. We'll have a look later as to how you apply these text styles to text. So let's save and close that down. Let's open up Preface. As you can see, a fairly blank page. I'm going to use this to demonstrate how to copy and paste text in from your source document into Sigil and then adjust it to get the look that you would like. In the first instance, I'm just going to select Preface there and turn that into a paragraph. Now I normally work in, and create my print books in Adobe InDesign, but I know many of you will also work in Word. So we'll do, we'll do it from both softwares and see what the difference is. I'm going to bring up a Word document that I have here. And it's very simple. The preface is in a Heading 1 style. The subtitle there is in a Heading 2 style and all the following text is in a normal style. Now I know that some people when they type in Word create a paragraph as this one is then hit press return or enter on their keyboard and create a second blank paragraph as the spacing between the preceding and the following paragraphs. And that's what I've set up here. So let's import this into Sigil and see what happens. So I'm Clicking in the text on my keyboard, I press Control and A. I'm on a PC, so if you're on a Macintosh, that would be Command A to select all of the text. I then press Control C to copy everything that's selected, and that would be Command C on a Macintosh. So that's all we need to know from there. And clicking in Sigil in our editor here, again, Control A to select everything that's there, and Control V to paste the text that we previously copied and Sigil's asking me do I want to paste the clipboard data in its plain text and yes I do. And the reason is that when you copy and paste from Word into other programs, particularly these type of HTML documents, the paste comes with a lot of hidden coding that can be transferred into a Sigil document and affect the way that our text looks and makes it difficult makes it awkward to edit and try and figure out what's going on. So by pasting as plain text, it strips away all of the hidden formatting and all, your, all you paste in are the, are the letters and the characters. So yes. So there we have our document pasted in. So let's do a couple of things first. Here's our title. So I'm just clicking in the title or you can certainly select it all. Both will work and press Heading 1, H1. And it takes on the character, the predefined character of a Heading 1 style. Let's select Subtitle, Heading 2. And again, that takes on the character. In Sigil, these have already been designated paragraphs. And you'll see that as I select the text, or just place my cursor in it, that the Paragraph button is highlighted. But we've got some rather large spaces in between our paragraphs. Now the way to understand what's going on there is let's have a look at the code view and see what's going on behind the scenes. So largely we're looking at everything below the body tag here. And you'll see here that we've got our title, preface, with a heading 1 tag. Our subtitle with a heading 2 tag. So these tags simply tell the browser or the e-reader what styles to apply to the text. And we've got a paragraph tab and, and that tag closes there and here we have a blank paragraph tag. 
So let's delete that because in Sigil that's not required. So I'm just going to select it, I'm backspacing to get out of it and I'm going to go back and have a look at code view. I'm leaving these ones in so we can see the difference. So here we have heading 1, heading 2, paragraph, paragraph and then there's a big space. But you'll notice between these two paragraphs where I deleted the blank paragraph that was in there, there's a space. And that's because in Sigil and with lots of websites and generally with HTML coding, when a paragraph is designated paragraph, it automatically has a space following the text. So there's no requirement to actually put in that additional space that we've got down here. So we need now to go through and just remove those. So just click in the spot where the space is and backspace or delete. You can do that quite quickly. Down through the text. And there we go. So that's all quite neat. Now you'll notice down here, Stephen Outram is a paragraph, author of the first five years is a paragraph. Now I would like author of the first five years to sit up snug underneath Stephen Outram. So let's go and have a look at the code so we understand how that's set out. And you can see here that Stephen Outram and the first five years are as two separate paragraphs. So they're formatting correctly. Back to the book view. So what I'm going to do is place my cursor in front of author and backspace to remove the hard return. Now the hard return is something that you get when you press the enter key. I'll do that now. So when I press the enter key, it forms two paragraphs, Stephen Outram and author. So I'm backspacing to remove that. Now to get a, what's called a soft return to allow that author line to sit underneath the Stephen Outram line, I'm going to hold my shift key down and press enter once. And you can see the difference there. Let's have a look at what happened in the code. So here you can see that Stephen Outram, author of the first five years, is now a complete paragraph. And there's a new tag here, which is a break tag, which creates a soft return and just moves that author line down one line. Now as I'm looking at my code, I can see that there's something here that's not required. This is just part of the pasting that's come from another software, so I'm going to do a clean up here and remove that. So they're gone. And I'm just going to look up through my code. And I see here there's a colored character. You see that there, that whole thing right there. Now that's a non breaking space. It's a way of of adding a space between things and it's something that I've noticed does get inserted from time to time. You can leave that there, it will cause no, no harm at all, no problem, or you can remove it. It's entirely up to you. But just remember to get the whole thing from the, the ampersand symbol all the way to the semicolon. Or leave it in there, as I say. You can see one there. It, it won't cause any difficulty at all. So I'm just scrolling up through there and I can see it looks good. Heading 1, heading 1 is good. Heading 2, heading 2 opens and closes. All the paragraphs are clean with their opening tag and their closing tag. It made sense. It looks clean. I'm not seeing anything there that's out of place. While we're in the code, above the body, in the head tags, you'll see an opening head tag and a closing head tag. There's this item, a link. And the link is is a reference to a, a file in the Sigil filing system. So it says styles, style 001.css. And what's happened here is, is I have pre-linked the style sheet, which controls a lot of how the text looks and acts in our document, to this document, to this chapter. So that the heading 1 here is controlled by what's going on in that style sheet. And I'll, we'll look at that in another tutorial, have a look at styles and how they work. just wanted to point out to you that you've got to tell Sigil that you want this style, style 001.css, everything in this document, to apply to this chapter. And what this means is that you could have several style sheets containing certain information and perhaps one be applied to one, one document, one page, one chapter, and another style be applied to another. And 
page or chapter and get a different different styling, a different look there. Let's go back to book view. So here we have a preface all done, fairly straightforward, fairly easy. Let's save that and close it down. Now say for example that you didn't have a foreword in your book or a preface. You can simply right click here in the book browser and delete. And Sigil will ask you to confirm that you'd like to delete that document and you delete it. And that step starts a process where the, the record of that particular document is also removed from content.opf, which is kind of a manifest or a log of, of all of the elements, parts and pieces that make up our ebook. So Sigil's doing things in the background, doing good management. Let's look here. Section 001. Open that. This is the placeholder page that I use to create new chapters. And I generally leave the if I'm creating 10 chapters or 100 chapters, I generally leave the chapter in this format. And the reason is that as you create duplicates of this document, which we'll do in a second, it sets up a naming sequence so that they all stack on top of each other in the correct order. You can certainly rename them by right-clicking and clicking Rename, but you may lose the automatic ability to create se sequential numbering so that your chapters stack up correctly in the order that they're meant to be. So we'll leave that for the moment and perhaps after you've completed all of your chapters and you have the sequence set up then you might rename them if you desire that reference to be available to you. So this the default settings on here are mainly for your your reference we're not going to use them we're going to actually delete all of these anyway but you can see that a chapter name is set up to be heading 1, a subtitle, I'm suggesting it should be heading 2. I'm saying here that you can right click this file in book browser, this file in book browser, and create new chapters with sequential ordering. There's a little example of how a list item looks, um, a paragraph, a placeholder image, a caption for that image, and down below uh, another paragraph and how a footnote will look in this document. And all of this styling list items, etc. is controlled by this style.001.css document. So the first thing we want to do is to keep this template file available to us because we want to create more than one chapter. So we need this to be available to create from. So the way that we begin creating a new chapter is to go across here in the book browser, right click on section 001 and then add copy. And what this does is it creates section 002 and you'll see section 002 is now up here. Here's our original section 001. And so we're going to work in section 001 to put our first chapter in and then later we're going to use section 2 to create our next chapter. So now we'll go to InDesign and I'll use that to copy a chapter and we'll place it within this document and follow through on that. So here's my InDesign. Let's open up a chapter. I've got one here called A New Life. So I don't have to look much further than this. I'm just going to click within the text of InDesign, press Ctrl A to copy everything in that chapter and Ctrl C to copy it. Then let's go back to Sigil, click in the text, Control A to select everything, and then Control V to, to replace everything I've selected with what's on my clipboard. Control V, and there's the text from the chapter that I took out of InDesign. Now what you'll notice here is there's no big gaps between the paragraphs, and that's because I've set up the styling in InDesign that each paragraph has its own spacing behind so there's no need to add that blank paragraph in to keep keep the spaces. So here's our chapter title let's make that heading 1. I have subtitles let's make those heading 2. So we've got a quote here let's go, we'll go back and have a look at InDesign and see what I did with that in the main book in the print book 
uh, paragraphs look good. You can see we've got an end there. Now what I've noticed is that there's a space below my last line. Now I like to keep it very clean and there's certain reasons for that but I'm going to delete that space so I've got no extra paragraphs sitting in underneath my last line of text. So I'm just backspacing and that's gone. Let's pop back to InDesign and just see how that's set out. So we can see chapter title, subtitle and this quote is indented. So let's do that. So I'm selecting the text that I would like to indent. I come up to here to indent and simply click the button. And that does that. Now let's have a look in the code view and just see what changed. And so here we have our body. So we're dealing with everything below the body tag. There's our heading, heading 2. And so we see that all of this, all of these four lines, which are four paragraphs, have been given a block quote tag, which has caused them to indent. Now, you'll notice that each one of these lines is its own paragraph within the block quote tags. And over here in the preview, you see that this text doesn't sit up snug one line after the other. So if that's a preference that you like having that space there, then, then we're done. But if you would like to have these lines up, up snug with each other, then we need to change something. So let's go back to this view. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click I'm going to click just in front of the second line when and I'm going to backspace to bring that up in line with my first line. Now if I hit enter it automatically creates a new paragraph. But that's not what I'm after. So I'm going to backspace again. Now if I press the shift key down and hold that down and press enter once I get what's known as a soft return. And I'm going to do that with each of my lines and then we'll go back and have a look at what's changed in the code. Shift key, press enter once. Shift key, press enter once. So now we have the whole quote sitting together. Let's have a look at the code. What we have here is our block quote tag opening and then within that there is a paragraph tag and at the end of each line is a break tag and it's the break tag that provides the soft return. So at the end of each line we've got a break tag, a break tag and then we come down to the last line and the paragraph tag closes and beyond that the block quote closes. So all of these elements go together to form this indented text that we see. Now it may seem a little complex, or it may not, but it actually makes sense if you follow through on the sequence of how the tags are working together to create the style that we're now seeing. Okay, so that's in place. Our paragraphs are looking good. Let's now just quickly run through the code and just see if there's anything there that looks odd. See we've got the odd non-breaking space there, that's fine. I'm going to leave those. Our paragraphs are clean. Paragraph tags Paragraph tags, opening and closing, fine. There's our block quote and our headings. So this looks very clean to me. Now one of the reasons that I like to create ebooks this way, rather than exporting an EPUB file from Word or an EPUB file from InDesign or some other software, is that when you export from another software, often there is a whole bunch of coding, this hidden coding that comes with it. So instead of this very clean and simple HTML style coding, there'll be a lot of other elements that come in there. And what I've found is that when I take my final and completed ebook and upload it to one of the online distributors like Smashwords or Lulu, often their checks will fail the document. And then I have to go through the document and try and figure out what bit of strange code it is that's creating a problem with my distributor. When I do ebooks this way and I have the very simplest and cleanest HTML code, I never have any issue 
uploading documents, uploading ebooks to my online distributors. They go straight through. And what I know is that these ebooks, because they don't have any hidden and obscure coding that's come from an export process, can all be read by the various and many ebook readers that, that people have. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for, for your document to be read by, by the customer and that they have a good, easy, pleasant experience reading your book and don't have to try and figure out what's going on with some odd formatting that suddenly appeared. So we're looking good there. Code view is good. Let's save and we're done. And that is the process of creating new chapters. Is to close down the old chapter, to work on the next sequence, come over here, right click, add copy, come back to the previous one, and then copy and paste in your document, all of your copy, all of your writing, correct it, adjust it, and make it clean, and then save. This has been a tutorial on how you transfer copy from your source documents into Sigil to create content pages for your ebook.